What's up, it's Val Today we're going to do 2021 number two on graphing, pedigrees, and genetics. So genetics investigated a mode of inheritance of a rare disorder that altered glucose metabolism and first shows symptoms in adulthood. They study a family in which individuals in generation two and three are known to have the disorder. Based on the pedigree, they conclude that the individual uh, one, I'm sorry, two, two is where we saw the disorder start and it was caused by mutation in mitochondrial DNA. They give us some data based on our blood glucose levels of different individuals um, in generation four. And then they tell us kind of who's at risk and not based on certain levels. So the first question is always going to be about biology. So disorder alters glucose metabolism. We need to describe the atoms and types of bonds in a glucose molecule. Glucose is a carbohydrate. So based on the name carbo, we know there's a carbon. And then hydrate is going to have a hydrogen and an oxygen. Those bonds between them are going to be covalent bonds. So the atoms are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and are held together by covalent bonds. So let's see what the student wrote. Glucose is made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's formula C6H12O6. The bonds formed between these atoms in the glucose molecule are covalent bonds. So they were quick and to the point, and they explained um, everything that needed to be done in order to describe what makes up that glucose molecule. So B, using the template in the space provided for your response, construct an appropriately labeled graph based on the data in table one. So looking at this, we can see that they've already labeled the y-axis for us. Um, do you notice that they did break the axis? You are allowed to break axes or axes, whatever, um, when you do a graph, but do make sure that you don't graph any data points below the break. So you're always able to break your graph, just make sure there's no data below that. So we need to make sure that we label our x-axis and our y-axis as well as grade our points. So we would put individuals on our x-axis because we have different individuals. Now, this is categorical data. So I'm going to make a bar graph. OK, so, oh, yeah, we need to have our y-axis. So average blood glucose level. I um, mean, I always tell my students to use whatever's in the chart. So whatever they've given you in your data table, just go ahead and write that on your axes. That will ensure that you have your units and all the other fun stuff. So then we're going to graph our mean. So if you notice here, this is our mean. So we have 170, 190, 145, 165, and so on and so forth. So we're going to graph our means, okay? After that, we look at this plus or minus. So notice that we have a plus or minus 15. That means that I'm going to go above 170 by 15 and below 170 by 15. And so we would do that for all of our error bars, okay? Now I'm doing this on a computer, so things aren't exactly perfect. Just kind of bear with me on that. But this should be what our graph should look like approximately. So you got points for your axes labeling, plotting the bar graph or modified bar graph and error bar. In case you don't know, but modified bar graph means that there would just be a data point right here and then the error bar would come above and below that. Um, so there are advantages and disadvantages of either of those. So don't worry about that. Um, so here's what was on the actual scoring guidelines as an example for the readers. And then this is what the person that you know, got a perfect score got. Um, so as you notice, they have labeled their axes. Um, they also have our bar graph as well as their error bars. So they have a full credit on this part. So now we have to do the second part, determine one individual who is both at risk for developing the disorder. So if we look here, we can see that anybody that's between 140 and 199 is at risk. So we draw like a little dotted line to help us see that. We then need to say, okay, and is significantly different than um, 4-1. So this individual right here is 4-1. We need to know someone that is sig like kind of significantly different from that. That means that their error bars don't overlap. Number two overlaps. And number four is going to overlap. By that mean, I mean that it has the same kind of values in terms of the y-axis. Um, so our error bar does not overlap with individual three. So that would be our answer here. So the person says, one individual who is at risk of developing a disorder with significantly different blood glucose levels than um, 4-1 is 4-3. We know this because the error bars on the graph do not overlap, making the difference in blood glucose level for 4-1 and 4-3 significantly different. So now looking at the pedigree, identify all individuals in generation four who can pass the mutation onto their children. As a reminder, the prompt did tell us that the inheritance is mitochondrial. Mitochondrial is meaning that there's some type of egg producer and that egg producer is what's going to pass it on because the mitochondria is in the egg um, and so that means that our circles our females are going to be the ones that can pass on the trait and so here we see that in uh, the third generation three two has the trait and can pass on the trait okay um, and then three six also has the trait and can pass on the trait but three eight cannot pass on the trait so that means that one two three and four are the only ones that at, like that could potentially have the trait 
So then we want to know of those individuals who have the trait, can they pass it on? So looking here, the only one that is not a female is number three, which means that one, sorry, four, one, four, two, and four, four are the only ones who can pass it on because of the fact that they're the only ones that are females and thus have the eggs to pass on the trait. And so four, one, four, two, and four, four. So individuals with capacity on mutation are individual 414244. This trait is found in so it is only passed down by females with the trait. Generation uh, 4, only individuals 1, 2, and 4 are female and have parents with the trait and show at-risk blood glucose levels. They can pass the mutation onto their children. So the last one we have is that it states that 2-2 two -two is affected. Student claims that the disorder is inherited in an X-linked recessive pattern. By being X-linked, that means that the trait is on the X chromosome. And in order for a female to have it, you would have to have two of these affected X chromosomes versus a male would have to have just one of these affected X. Based on the student's claim, predict which individuals of Generation 3 will be affected by the disorder. And then based on the pedigree, justify why the data did not support the student's claim. So if we look here and we say, okay, well, if it's affected by X linked, okay, we would expect um, all the individuals to be affected, right? Um, and so we want to say, okay, well, could that be possible if it was X linked? So here I have a female. A female has two X chromosomes. Since the male is not affected, this female would not be affected. Here I have a male, and of course I have an affected female, and she passes on her X chromosome, and the male would pass on his Y chromosome. So four could potentially be affected. Here I'm looking at six. Again, it's another female. Because of the fact that the male is not affected, I would not see it in six either because she would have to have gotten that faulty X from her um, father. And then here I have another male that got the uh, affected X from the mother. So, of course, the only individuals who would be affected would be um, three, four, and three, eight. Um, so there is our answer. And then in terms of justification, the data does not support the claim because females 3, 2, and 3, 6 have the disorder. But if it was X-linked, they could only do so if their father, 2, 1, had the disorder, which he does not. Um, the data does instead support mitochondrial inheritance because all the offspring, not only the sons, have the disorder. And so the student said, based on the student's claim, all the male offspring of 2, 2 will have the trait, although no females will have it because it is a recessive disorder and their father has the dominant trait, which will be expressed. The individual predicted to be based on the student's claim are four, I'm sorry, I missed it, four and eight. Um, in generation three, the data does not support the student's claim because the trait is found in mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down by the mother and not autosomal DNA, which is from both parents. For this reason, all of the two, three, and two <laughs> offspring will have the mutation. So I hope that was helpful. And remember, if you have a pain with success, 